Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters, and all the slab of the gullians. <laughs> Welcome to another episode <laughs> with Mohammed Ijal Haider. Haider, man, you're right. I would like to thank you for your recent refutation of what was that woman called? Ilhan. <laughs> what, what, no, Ayan no. Hirsi. Ayan Hirsi, yeah. If you guys haven't watched it, guys, please go there. I think it was the best refutation down in history. Uh, <laughs> it was it was absolutely epic with new words. Um, but today it's something a bit different. It's a bit of a controversial topic that's been happening. Um, now, we've been discussing how we can tackle this. And we're going to come from different um, venues, shall I say? Angles. Angles. Angles, mm -hmm. yes. So, Hijab, are you ready? Let's I'm get straight into it because I think we waste a lot of time, you know, talking sometimes unnecessary. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Let's get straight into it. Yeah. So this was a baby, BBC, BBC interview. Yeah. Woman's hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't it ironic? Woman's hour. But look what she does to a sister, a Muslim woman. How many uh, female imams are there? Um, I, in in the I'm, UK at the moment, just because you, I presume we, we, we'll get to this more, but representing, of, of course, women, uh, which you will do as part of this. How many do we have in Britain? I mean, I think... To give quick context, this is uh, the reason um, she's um, uh, the, um, the the lead, not leader, man, of the Muslim uh, Council of Britain. Yeah? Is it? Yeah, she's the new, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like a, like she, the head, yeah, yeah she's, the, she's the head. Like, she's the uh, director now of the Muslim Council of Britain. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So... Just imagine you have just been like awarded something, yeah? You, you're a mm. champion, yeah? Imagine you've, yeah, you've, you've done something mm. and this is how you've been treated. Again, I'm not, I, I wouldn't have a clue on these numbers because my role is making sure that we include our affiliates, particularly women, in the work that we are doing and making sure that um, we're, our structures, as well as the work we do, um, are truly representative. So I think that, do, you know... Do we, sorry... You don't know. That's, that's fine if you don't know. But do do we have female imams in this country? I mean, again, it's not. What, are you referring to chaplains? Or are you referring to women that lead the prayer? What are you referring to? And I think well, you tell me. I, I, I'm, I'm genuinely intrigued to know. Of course, uh, female priests have been around for some time. Uh, we've also uh, seen the, the advent of female rabbis in this country. Well, what is the picture for women leading prayer in Britain in in Muslim communities? Well, I think my role isn't really to um, adjudicate or to, to examine that part of, of spirituality. I think where women want to make those choices and where, you know, that these are all religious discussions. Oh, no, no, Muslim of course. It was, it, it was just I thought because the Muslim Council of Britain's played such an important role in getting the number of Muslims, for instance, added to the census. I mean, that was done at the turn of, of the turn of the century. So we actually knew how many Muslims there were. Do, do we so do we have female imams? I think what's really important for the Muslim Council of Britain and the work that we do is actually that it's not about defining, you know, or going into the, these types of questions regarding spirituality, but actually looking at how we can benefit our communities, especially given the pandemic and given of course. the role that everybody needs to be playing. And, and, and think, we, will get to the, we will get to the pandemic. It's just quite striking that you, you can't sort of answer that question. I recognise it's not a, a religious or spiritual Role. Exactly. I don't feel like that's within the parameters of my roles and responsibilities, especially as, you know, the first elected female representative. Rep I mean, I would have asked a man, but I I'm asking you because well, just... you're here. How do you, how do you feel watching that? You know, it's, it's, it's like you're having a, you know, it was more like not interviewing someone, but it was like having an interlocutor. Hmm. And like, like if I if I was speaking to an atheist, I would be hammering the contingency argument over and over and over and over again because I'm trying to catch him. <clears throat> She's just, you know, become the chairman and cha chairwoman of a Muslim uh, ca ca council, yeah? Mm -hmm. And instead of congratulating, asking what she's planning on doing, bro, she was no mercy. She was like, no, do you know? You don't know? Okay, so there isn't, no. Over and over, so there were six instances. While watching that, how do you feel? I think there was uh, many fallacies that were committed in that uh, line of interrogation. So the first thing that I, I think was fallacious was the false equivalency uh, between imams and priests and rabbis. It's false comparison because... Yeah. So in in Christianity, you have ordinance that they go through a kind of training program, then they become yeah. either priests or whatever it is, depending on the denomination. Mm -hmm. uh, in Judaism, you have rabbis. But those individuals, rabbis and priests, are usually uh, trained. They're usually individuals who have authority in the community. So the equivalent in a Muslim community, especially in Sunni Islam, would be something like a mufti, potentially a sheikh. And definitely something like an alim or a um, scholar. Yeah. So an imam is just uh, someone who leads the prayer. Now you can have no authority. Like for example, in Ramadan, um, you have children leading the prayer. Yeah. 
if if you have in a house a mother and a child that's a male the, the it's very uh, possible that the, the 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 boy leads the mother in, in prayer mm -hmm. even though she's much more important in the hierarchy right yeah. so this uh, the reason why it's it's a wrong question in the first place or it's a false equivalence is because you're comparing apples and oranges yeah. if you wanted to compare priests with a group of uh, representatives in the Muslim world, you should compare them with Muftis, etc. Mm. Having said that, though, yeah. if we did do that, I don't know about the comparison. It's actually quite an interesting question. Definitely there are female Muftis. Definitely there are female Alimas. Definitely there are Shaykhat, uh, the Shaykhas that okay. are Muslim. But in terms of pro uh, proportion, I don't know. What I will say is this, before, mm. before I forget, is that in the span of 1,400 years of Islamic history, mm. right, there have been hundreds of of thousands of not just scholars of Islam that are female, but mm. we're talking about prominent scholars who have had a lasting contribution. And I'll just give you one reference for that. So Akram Nadwi, Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad Akram Nadwi has written a book, it's uh, voluminous, uh, many different volumes yeah. on, it's called Al-Muhadithat. Okay. So it's just actually one subfield called uh, Hadith, which mm. is transmission and teaching of Hadith. And he catalogues in that 10,000 women. 10,000 women in Islamic history, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you compare that like for like with- 10,000 what women? What well, are they just women? They just exist, what are they? Scholars, scholars of just one tradition, one subfield, which is hadith. Okay. So transmission of um, the prophetic tradition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in that, for example, I've, some of the things I found were really astonishing. For example, Muhyiddin, uh, Muhyiddin uh, Ibn Najjar, because yeah. there's two Ibn Najjars that are quite popular. Mm. Ibn Najjar of the 7th century, not the one, the Hanbali that wrote uh, Muntah al Iradat, another one. Yeah. Muhyiddin uh, Ibn Najjar, he had, according to a Dhahabi in his uh, biography, 400 mm. female teachers. Now, I want oh. you to imagine we're talking about the seventh century. Mm. We're not we're not being tokenistic here and mentioning you know the, the Sahabiyat or the female scholars mm. that were there at the time of the Prophet. Mm. We are talking about seventh century uh, medieval uh, Arab world, mm. and this is a place a Muslim world. And a man had what does it take for a man to have four hundred female educators? It must mean that they are being educated, and and they are given accessibility to be able to educate. Yeah. And this is one of many. Like thousands of examples. Okay. The point. The point is, is that now, is if there isn't a representation of female scholars now today yeah. in the UK or whatever it is, is there a problem? I do think there's a problem. I think that there's something we need to do okay. to try and give more accessibility, as was the case, by the way. Interestingly enough, mm. at the time of a the Prophet, because he he definitely, uh, as is mentioned in Bukhari, yeah. he dedicated times and places for educating women specifically so that they don't miss out. And was the case with the fact that, you know, the, the, the Sahabiyat were there. And was the case throughout Islamic history. So I do think there's an issue. Yeah. I think, But the way that she's she's uh, handled that, mm -hmm. I think, is completely wrong. It shows theological yeah. Ill illiteracy. She doesn't know the differences between priests and, uh, and, and, and one thing, alims and yeah, so on. One yep. thing I want to just touch upon before mm -hmm. moving into that area, because there is the, like, the, the mistreatment uh, of females uh, in today's time. Yes. Before I go to that. I thought you would come from this angle, yeah. Maybe you missed yeah. it, yeah. But for example, no disrespect, but who are you to come and tell us and yeah, implement? And yeah, let's suppose there is no female imams. So yeah. what? Like, like we need to come to this angle because we, we shouldn't be just because next they're going to come and say to us, "Why is there no female prophets?" Yeah, A good but, point. So the thing is, look, and and this is where the sister was kind of, and I understand where she's coming from. I can, you know, we're in the dawah. Sometimes we try to, you know, sugar down things. We shouldn't. There are no female imams. Our religion doesn't call for that. And what? Like the thing is, and what? Who are you to come and tell me that I have to come to your standards? Which, by the way, is a false equivocation because mm. you're claiming because there's no imams means there's no scholars, which you just debunked. Yeah. But we're saying, like, to to her world paradigm, does she have any right to come here and tell and pr yeah, press yeah. a Muslim woman yeah. who is a chairman of the Muslim Council of Britain to come and tell her, no, but why? Why not imams? Why not imams? Well, and she this has is the same a, woman when right. it came to the issue of rabbis. Um, I don't know. What, 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 where's the quote? What does she say? So Emma Barnett once admitted she didn't believe in female rabbis. Yeah? SubhanAllah, mm. look at the hypocrisy. Yeah? Rabbis, go, go speak to Jewish lady and go, go question them that they don't even have a right to divorce. Yeah? And I know it's a different topic, but the thing is, can you imagine you're just pressing on the issue and who are you? And we need to have a backbone. Well, like, there's something in the religion that teaches Allah said it. Khalas. Khalas, I don't need to explain nothing to you. Who are you? Yes, yes. Who are you? Allah said, there's no imams. There's, look, look, there are no female imams. Does the religion allow female imams to lead Aki? No, no, not no, according no. to 99% of no, no, scholars. No, no, Aki, one second. Just because that is not allowed in the religion, mm. and just because they're not female prophets, do we see females as any less? Should there be um, female imams leading men? Leading men, no. 
Okay. Meaning men, no. But look, look, they, Is it because they're inferior? No, of course not. Look, there are things that women are entitled to that men. We don't have a second wave feministic paradigm. And, and for those who want to know what the difference is between the Islamic paradigm and the second wave feministic paradigm, there are many um, lectures that I've done on this, the fundamental flaws of feminism, yeah. uh, Islam, the dark face of feminism. Just put, put these titles in the, in yeah. the yeah. Uh, search bar, you'll find my, my, my lectures there. Yeah. It's a paradigmatic problem in the sense that you're now imposing a paradigm on something else. Yeah. And this is another problem, right? Obviously here, uh, in terms, of, there's two different things that are going on at the same time. Number one, female scholars are what are being discussed here. Yes. So this this uh, female imam thing is a red herring. Yes. Of all due respect, someone pr praying and bending because our prayer has all kinds of positioning. Yeah. Uh, a woman bending over in front of men and uh, kneeling over and yeah. is seen as inappropriate from our perspective because of yeah. physiological anatomical differences. Yeah. And we think and we have good evidence that that could uh, disturb somebody. Okay, uh, yeah. especially a man physiologically if yeah. they're praying and what's the evidence of that look you've got all female schools and all male schools yeah. in your country why don't you go and question Man, go to your country well, and on. talk about women well, getting well, uh, assaulted and, in the well, workplace one second now, well, someone, why don't you go and question a head teacher of yeah. an all female school and say why is it that you allow such uh, discrimination to yeah. exist the reason why they don't uh, comment on that is because they've allowed it as part of the culture even though really and truly it's something which opposes in many ways second wave feministic discourses yeah. So the reasoning behind it, if you ask those who advocate for it, is distraction, physiological, psychological distraction. So a woman or girls in a school together, they'll be less distracted if even, boys were there in, and in, vice versa. Even in a, for a man's, you know, the, one, the way a man is created, yeah? The recently I came across something on YouTube, yeah? mm. it's something called Schultz, yeah? And he was talking about, mm. uh, you know, these female uh, women uh, ho uh, um, hostesses in, in the airplane. Yeah. yeah. The closing the door. So I thought like closing the door, what's like, I thought it's something, you know, these interesting videos, yeah? Maybe yeah. is there a way they're closing the door? Okay, I watched the video. Then, like, they weren't dressed inappropriately. Obviously, they were in a skirt. But then I went to the comment well, section. For us, that would be inappropriate. No, no, no. I know, no, but what I'm trying to say yeah. is that they, they won't really, like, you know, reveal oh, the body okay, parts. Right, like, right. they were dressed. Yeah. Yeah, do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm. I was looking for something at the door because I was thinking, okay, is there a way of closing the door? Yeah. I went to the comment section. All I see comments of, oh, I didn't notice the door. I didn't yeah. notice the door. Exactly. Get the hell out of here, man. You, no, no, you, no. You, they, they know it. Women Look, are sexual. Uh, like, yeah, yeah they know it. They, they know it. And so this. Uh, equality from an Islamic perspective and yeah. there is our, we have our own version of equality yeah. is not identicality exactly. it's not identicality it doesn't mean that men and women have the same roles and responsibilities in all cases and there are, yeah. for example war like it's not mandated upon women at yeah. the end of the day and this is a very if you think about the, 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 the reality of war War is the case of men, yeah. okay, for the most part in history, not just yeah. uh, in Islamic history, but cross-culturally, yeah. going out yeah. and sacrificing their lives or potentially sacrificing their lives. The point of the matter is... Someone goes to extreme to say for women. Yeah, no, no. Uh, most, uh, this, is, this is where second wave feminism kind of breaks yeah. down because you yeah. start thinking about why don't you campaign for the draft yeah. or women to, to now be compensated listen, in listen, similar listen. ways that men I'll have cook, been done. I'll cook at home. You go, and keep, like, you go and get your limbs chopped off. I can come and say, why am I going to war? Why am exactly. I fighting? Exactly. There's lots of things, right? But if we fail to identify differences between men and women, then there's going to be all kinds of absurdities that one can propose from a feministic perspective. Yeah. I can say, well, there's been there's been two hundred years yeah. of men being drafted into wars. We need to we need to out, uh, undo this imbalance. Yes. Now we have to draft women for the next eleven wars, for the next twelve wars, yeah. so that we can undo the just injustice. The point is. Once again, the Islamic understanding of equality does not mean identicality. So okay. there's a different paradigm. And if you want to be a sophisticated interlocutor, instead of cross-examining somebody on your worldview, on your paradigm, try and understand where they're coming from. I, look, I don't know if this woman is an enemy of Islam. I don't, I think, I, I don't think so. I, I think she, she's that. just trying to do her job, really. Yeah. I, I do think, because it's part of the journalistic yeah. capacity to yeah. try and interrogate. Well, but you have to remember hostile. something. You do have to remember something. That when you're speaking to my... For, let's not talk about our paradigm. Let me speak to the woman for a second. Let's talk about your paradigm. Because you're a journalist. Yes, you're a journalist who probably is a liberal with a small L and is trying to do the work of journalists. But the truth of the matter is, on your paradigm, which I'm guessing is a liberal feministic paradigm by your questioning, you need to make sure, you need to ensure that you're protecting the rights of the minorities. And you're not, it's, because there's something called tyranny of the majority. Tyranny of the majority is something which is the, the dominant people, the dominant uh, group is now um, kind of assaulting, verbally or otherwise, the minority. And they're tyrannizing them. Okay, so mm. in, what needs to be done for me anyways, 
if I was a liberal, if I was in your paradigm, I would be trying to amplify the voices of the minorities. Yeah. So it can kind of create equilibrium for what would otherwise be a tyranny of the majority, which is a liberal principle. So it doesn't seem any, it doesn't make sense for me to, for you to bring a minority, someone who's um, representing a minority group, or actually a double minority, because exactly. a woman leader, like you know, that there's not that many of them uh, and no, and generally. Only, and only that in the woman's hour. In a woman's as a hour. Feminist, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get in another woman and they it doesn't. Rape. It doesn't make sense for okay, me. One second. Yeah. You get to look at a feminist. Yeah. Woman's hour, BBC, liberal. You're a woman, <laughs> and you get in a woman and degrading and humiliating her. And you are you are a feminist? Get the hell out of here! Yeah, you humiliated another yeah, woman uh, it's, it's, to an achievement that she's done in your eyes. Okay, she's become the uh, leader of the Muslim Council of Britain. Yeah. yeah. Instead of uh, upholding and saying, you know, you've done a great great achievement, what do you have to do? Yeah. You humiliated her. You embarrassed her. You made her feel like she should never speak to you. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. So she, you, you basically punished her for being a woman. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you think as, about it, as a feminist. So if so now now other Muslim women go look at that and think, well, if this the if this is the entailment of being. Uh, a Muslim spokesperson Then maybe it's not something I want to be And in. Allah says that in the Quran What does Allah say in the Quran? What does Allah say in the Quran? Yeah. They will never be pleased with you Khalas yeah. Never So don't feel The sister felt bad for the sister Because she was thinking Okay how can I uh, fix this Wallahi Sister no, very simple For me There isn't There isn't Our religion says Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen What? Yeah, 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 no, th let's go back to one point here again well, I want to maybe finish with this The reason why I, f I found That the, 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 the line of questioning was Unproductive, mm. not just from the Islamic perspective, yeah. Because we said we've got some issues that we need to, like, 100%. let's be honest. Let's be 100%. honest. There are there are masjids, there are Disgusting. mosques in this country yes. which don't have access for women. Okay? It's unbelievable. I, I told you. And, instant... and the Prophet said, "Let them not imet Allah Do not do not stop the woman slaves of Allah, meaning the woman yeah. worshippers, yeah. going to the mosques of exactly. God. How can Umar, you Umar, how Umar, can you facilitate that? How can you facilitate that when yeah. there's not even a space for them to pray? Abdullah bin Umar, Umar right? bin Khattab boycotted his very son because of this. Yeah. Mm. And the thing is, look me. I went to one masjid when I told you, yeah, and the, they did, the uncle didn't let the sister come in their space. Wallahi, I had to go and do jama'ah with the sister outside because it was a nightclub. Area, yeah, yeah, so there are problems. Th there, there are problems, and yes. we see that. And that's within our own paradigm. Yeah, access access is limited. We need to we need to help. We need to work within our own paradigm to allow women, just like just like in the medieval period, and just like in the in the time of the prophet. Yeah, where access was 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 there, yeah, right? Yeah. And and as a result, women were edified and they were edifiers. We need to bring that back, and there's yes. no doubt. There's no doubt, and we have that within our own paradigm. But it's unproductive, okay? It's unproductive for a woman who is probably a liberal, probably a feminist, mm. to go down this uh, line of uh, uh, um, questioning, which bullying. yeah, <laughs> bullying, which was number one, alienate uh, Muslim spokespeople. Uh, number two, show other women that this is the entailment of being a spokesperson, thereby, you know, acting as a barrier to entrance. To such a thing mm. if you're if you're trying to promote women being in power positions mm. so-called power positions yeah. from your liberal paradigm yeah. if you're trying to promote that this is a very bad way of doing so yeah. you should be you should be offering support and so on so i think from our paradigm and your paradigm you've not achieved anything and quite frankly it shows a theological incompetence and illiteracy that you couldn't even know the difference between an imam yeah. and a priest yeah, and a exactly. rabbi an imam is nowhere yes sometimes imams have pastoral responsibilities Sometimes they can have that, but it's not. Yeah. That's not a necessary part of their job. Sometimes they just go and lead the prayer. This is this is literally the job description: leading the prayer. Some children do this. It's not equivalent. And so the question should have been: How many Muslim uh, authorities do you have, sheikhs or sheikhs in this case, or alimas or muftis or so on, and compare that with the rabbi? And just, yeah, and if exactly. you do that, by the way, yeah. if you do that across time, I will sh I will promise you. I'll bet my bottom dollar yeah. that if you do it from the time of the prophet. To this time, no, I'm not talking about 21st century UK. Let's let's do a, a longitudinal study yes, yes. of uh, of of the entire time period. There's no way. I'm sorry. There is Forget absolutely it. no Forget way it. that you ha that in the Christian tradition and the Jewish yeah. tradition. There's even I would even go as far as say one tenth. Yes. And I'm making this claim. Yeah. One tenth as one much 50. representation. Yeah, maybe yeah. even that. <laughs> if I'm telling you, there's a book with ten thousand names of by of just one subfield of Islamic studies. Yeah. You, you can't even go there. You can't even go there with yeah. this. We have we have uh, Sahabi at that literally preserved the tradition so exactly. it's the the case is closed you didn't know how to question you didn't know the implications of your question and you didn't know what to question but this is a lesson for all of us that mm -hmm. before you have these interviews on bbc quite frankly you need to be ready for that kind of confrontation mm -hmm. number one and number two you know get ready for the muslim retaliation
yeah. because we we shouldn't we should not allow the media bullies yeah. to to do this to us yeah. we need to have our voice as well Especially and our sisters yeah, and look yeah. social media our outlets like your channel my channel and the dawa channels and so on yeah. this is becoming now a big way of retaliating yeah which is why you need to subscribe to this channel and like and share the video thank you i can be a bliss it's for my channel yeah Oh my God! <laughs> Either way, <laughs> yeah. Inshallah, brothers and sisters, it's very important. The reason we did this is because we saw our sister being bullied, and I'll be honest with you, I feel like she's being bullied. So share this video with what's her name, Emma Barrett, whoever her name, Barnett, whoever her name is. Yeah. Okay, send this to her. Okay, she needs to watch this and uh, re-focus um, her, re-evaluate, uh, re-evaluate um, her, uh, everything that That's she's right. doing. Yeah, she needs to re-evaluate need to because yeah. she's. Totally, wallah, she's just bullied that sister as a feminist, it's unbelievable, yeah? So, Brahman mm-hmm. says, please share that with them, uh, with the uh, Emma, inshallah, and hopefully she can fix her ways. Uh, BBC, get this uh, video down, inshallah, it's absolute humiliation, embarrassment to your uh, standards, whatever you guys are doing. <laughs> Till next time, to the Slub of the Gullians, goodbye.